Hey there, in this tutorial I want to take you through another two event types. These event types are called request and wait for reply and the second is the round trip. So let's have an example of one of these reply messages. Let's say this module wants to get the hardware alias which is defined in another module. I can simply click a button and that hardware alias has been transferred. And we see it happen again there. An example of a round trip message could be to start a thermo chamber. So when I click this button, I want a message to be sent from the root module here to the controller, and then a reply to be sent to say that it was initialized okay. But I also want the controller to launch a broadcast message to say, hey, a new thermo chamber has been launched, you need to act. Just as a very quick side note, in the last tutorial I showed a method of using subpanels with the DQMH. I wanted to quickly show you an alternative method which I use a lot more often, which is taking advantage of the module did init broadcast event. So when this broadcast message is received, I can get the VI name and then get a reference from that and then insert the VI reference into the subpanel. And I think this is a much cleaner approach. However, to ensure that this is the correct string, in your nested module, you will need to transfer the VI name. Okay, let's get back to those new types of event. Here we have an example of a request and wait for reply message where I can get the hardware alias, and then a request is sent for this information, and then the information is sent back to the root. Okay, let's create one of these messages. So we can go to the tools menu, go to Delacore, DQMH, event, and then create DQMH event. We can select a module and the module we want this event for will be the controller. So this is what's going to set the information. And instead of a request, let's make a request and wait for a reply and specify the new event name as get serial number. And then the event description could be return serial number. Notice how we now have two arguments windows. The first argument window will define the arguments being sent to the control module. And then the reply payload window is going to define all the arguments going back to where the message originated. Because we just want to get the serial number, we don't need to send any information to the controller, we just want to get information back. So we're going to return a simple string, but this could be any data type you like. I've mentioned this before, but you could specify multiple pieces of data here, but we only need one. And once we've done that, we can click OK. Now we've got a pop-up box here because we have an empty arguments window, i.e. this arguments window doesn't have any data defined, but that's OK. This dialog box is a really handy reminder, but for now we can ignore it and click OK. Doing that has scripted a new case in our tester for the controller. It has also changed the source code on the block diagram of the main VI. Like always, we should start off by completing the functionality of our DQMH module tester. This is going to help us out in the future. So the DQMH framework has scripted this brand new event case called get serial number, which in your project, you are going to find under requests get serial number, and we can click and drag that in. On this request, we have a reply payload. And if we use an unbundle function, you can see we'll get our serial number out, as well as any error information that may have occurred whilst performing this action. For now, let's just display the serial number on the front panel by creating an indicator. We'll click save, and on the front panel, we will put the new control and indicator into a sensible position, like so, and click save. So this is all we have to do for the tester. Now let's go to the module itself. So if we go to the controller main VI, these two cases were created for us, the event structure case and the case structure case at the bottom. I'm using LabVIEW 2015 here, but in later versions of LabVIEW, the next step will have been done for you. And that is to edit events handled by this case, and then select get serial number as a user event, 
and wire up the left hand node with the wait notifier and the wait for apply. But again, this is done for you in later versions of LabVIEW. So that's the top case done. The bottom case, we want to return the serial number. And so we've got some notes here about the code needed. And we're going to return the serial number using a notifier. So let's create a new control for serial number. And drag that in here. And connect the serial number control with the reply data. And there's no chance of this causing an error. So we're going to reduce that and also reduce the merge errors function at the bottom. Now let's open up our tester to make sure this works. So I'll run the tester, start the module, show the module panel. You then give it a unique serial number of 123ABC. You then get serial number. And you can see that serial number was transferred. The second type of event message I want to talk about today is the round trip event. So we still have an event case at the top which receives the message initially from the other module and I filled this out in order to start a firmware chamber. So in this case I'm starting the module like we've looked at in previous tutorials. In event a message gets sent to start firmware chamber and we have the same sort of case as we've just seen with the reply notifier here. The only difference here is this little broadcast message which broadcasts the message that Fermu Chamber started. And this has some really key benefits. So regardless of who sent the message of start Fermu Chamber, everyone who is subscribed to this broadcast message is going to receive it. Let's show you that in action. There are three scenarios I now want to show you. The first scenario is the intended use. So let's say the root module, which is the highest level module, sends a message to start the Fermu chamber. So the Fermu chamber starts, the button gets disabled, and we get a LED to say that it's been initialized. The second scenario is we launch the root module, but instead of sending a message to start the Fermu chamber, the control module itself starts the Fermu chamber. And we can see that the chamber starts and start FOMO chamber and initialized are already updated. The third scenario I want to show you includes the tester. So if I run the route as well, and let's say this control module didn't have a front panel. And why would a control module have a front panel? Instead, I could run its tester, and then start FOMO chamber from the tester itself and see how the chamber appears and these controls get updated. Also notice how Fermo chamber started gets updated. So I can prove this once more by running the root module, and then running the tester. And now if I start the Fermo chamber, Fermo chamber started gets added to the status. Now let's create our own round trip event to stop the Fermi chamber. So as always, let's go to tools, Delacore, DQMH events, create new DQMH event. The module we want to create the event for will be the controller and we want a round trip event. So that's a request and wait for apply with a broadcast. The name of the request and wait for the reply will be stop Fermi chamber. In Vendor Round Trip Broadcast, we're going to call FOMO Chamber Stopped. Just as a side note, notice how the request is named as a command, i.e., Stop FOMO Chamber. In then the Round Trip Broadcast is an announcement to say that the FOMO Chamber stopped. Of course, we'll give this an event description. And this is one of the scenarios where we don't actually need any data to go along with this message. It's simply a request to say, stop the Fermo chamber. So there's no data we need to send with this message in either going to with the request or the broadcast that comes afterwards. So let's click OK and click OK again for the empty arguments window. And now this is going to carry on and do some scripting in the background. Okay, so let's start with the tester. So what happens when we receive this broadcast event? Well, as I'm using an older version of LabVIEW, so you can download the code off GitHub, 
I need to edit the events handled by this case and select Thermo Chamber Stopped. Now this is the broadcast event we've just created. I will click OK. And then I've copied this format into string function from an, another event case where I can wire up the number, which is this bottom row. I'm using a quick drop shortcut to insert an increment function for the next event case. Now what I'm doing here is creating a simple message to say that Fermi Chamber was stopped. And then I'll wire up the existing string and wire out the new string. So this piece of code is going to prepend a message onto the front panel here. And that reminds me I have stopped Fermi Chamber, which I should move into a sensible position just there. And I'll save that. And let's head over to the module main VI. And in the module main VI, you know the drill by now, I need to edit events handled by this case, select stop Fermi Chamber, and then wire up the wait notifier, wait for reply. Again, so long as you're using Lavi 2016 or newer, this is already done for you. So this is done and I can delete this label. At the bottom here, this is where I'm going to close the Fermo Chamber front panel and stop it. So I'll take the request from the project. Um, lots of people like to do this via quick drop. However, when there's a lot of functions like this, I prefer to use the project as a floating palette. So I'm going to select hide panel and stop module and drag those in. Quickly speaking, by stopping the module, the panel will be hidden by default. However, I always like to cross the T's and dot the I's. And once we've shortened the merge error function, we can click save. And that's the functionality of this module done. However, there's a calling mod which is going to be registered to this broadcast event. So let's go to the root module main VI. And essentially when the Fermo chamber is stopped, I want to do the opposite of this case. So I'm going to right click and duplicate event case for Fermo chamber stopped, click OK. And now I will say enable that front panel control and initialized goes to false. And I can save this, but I'll also put a control on this front panel to say stop Fermo chamber. So when I click stop Fermo chamber, I want to trigger that roundhouse event. So I'm going to go into the controller, drag in stop Fermo chamber. And now we're ready to test our code. So let's run the root module. So we have the controller appearing and the root module behind it. Let's also open up the tester for the controller. So you go to testers, control API and run that as well, just so we can keep a track of all of the broadcast messages which are occurring. Boom, let's start the FOMO chamber. I can see that appears. And let's now click stop FOMO chamber. You can see that stop FOMO chamber worked and the broadcast event was received. And let's try that again, start and stop, start and stop. And now let's start it on the root and stop it on the tester, you can see that broadcast event was propagated through. As always, all of the code I've shown you is available on my GitHub page. Also, the vending machine example that I've been referring to in this tutorial series also takes advantage of these reply messages and the round trip messages to protect against race conditions. So as a bonus exercise, why don't you open up the vending machine example on my GitHub page and try and see where I've been using these reply messages. As always, please like, comment, subscribe and turn on notifications. And until next time, happy lab viewing.